What's up everybody? Welcome back to Timmy's Investments. Today, we're going to be talking about the reserve list. I'm going to share with you some of my strategies for investing in the reserve list cards. Starting with some of the cards I purchased a few years ago. And also some cards that I'm interested in buying now. And some cards that I've bought in between. So, first of all, what is the reserve list? The reserved list are, consists of all the cards that Wizards of the Coast can never print again. So there's a finite number of each individual card, which makes them more rare and more desirable. So let's get into some of the cards that I've bought in the past, and then also some that I want to buy in the future. And in between, we're going to kind of go over the charts and show you when is a good time to invest in some of these cards. So here we go. My story starts in 2017 when I really started looking at cards more of an investment rather than just, you know, fun to play with. 2017, this one card really sparked it for me. It was a card that to me was playable in formats. The artwork was absolutely sweet and it's just, it's just a very iconic card in the world of magic. So I thought at the time, there were several reasons, including the chart, why I thought it was a good time to buy. So summer 2017, I made my first investment in the reserve list. And that was Lion's Eye Diamonds, guys. I bought four Lion's Eye Diamonds. The price at the time, market price, was about 125 bucks, I believe. And I paid $100 per card for this playset of near mint unplayed copies these cards are honestly they're just beautiful all four of them beautiful lion's eye diamonds 400 bucks for the play set there's one other card i bought at the time these two mox diamonds now this card also is very beautiful very iconic and very powerful very playable so very desirable to players. Now, I watched over the next couple years as these cards really returned a good investment for me, and that was very exciting. So, 2019, I made another huge purchase. I bought a bunch of dual lands from Revise, which I'll make a whole nother video on that, hopefully, in the future. But today, I want to talk about my most recent purchase. In 2020, April, I decided this seems like a really good time to invest in a lot of different cards based on a lot of their charts. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. But first, I'm just going to show you all the cards I bought, and then we'll go over the charts, and then we'll also go over more cards that look, have very good charts right now, guys. Ch cards that I'm really interested in buying. So here we go. March and April, 2020, I'm just gonna show you. I bought two Silver Queens. These are very, they were pretty expensive, so I couldn't buy too many. Just had to buy what I could. Two Silver Queens. And then this is one of the cards that has done pretty well as well. I bought Scorch Ruin Disguise. This is one of the cards that I just really liked all, all my life, kind of growing up playing. I think the art's really cool. I really liked Weatherlight as a kid. So I just thought like, man, how can I buy these cards for 10 bucks? Honestly, like this card is $10. I'm just gonna buy as many as I can find. Near mint copies for 10 bucks. So I went on eBay, went on TCG player. I was just buying locally. I just went and I bought as many Scorched Ruins as I could find for 10 bucks or less. Some of these I was getting for seven bucks, just like insane guys. It was like all these new flashy foils, all these like new sets people are paying all this money for, all these collector boxes. And I'm just like, are you serious? What, like I can buy these freaking sick cards. So I bought, I think 30 something copies. I'm not gonna count them, but I bought a ton of copies. A ton of copies of Scorch Ruins, same thing. These are all March and April. This is another card that I just absolutely love. 
anything that has Lotus on it, like, I'll take it, you know, guys? So Lotus Fails, these market price was 15 bucks, I think, something like that. And I was getting them for 10 bucks, finding them all over the place. 10 bucks, 10 bucks, 10 bucks. Lotus Fails, near mint, near mint. Just honestly freaking awesome cards. Awesome cards. Weatherlight again. Here, I have two more Weatherlight cards. Let's see, let's see, let's do this one. This is one of my favorite cards. Favorite non-land cards. Actually, both of these are. Peacekeeper. This card's awesome. I just like, I like, like, the state of the world right now. Peacekeeper just seems like, it's, it feels, it feels right, you know? Like, I just loved it. It's like, yeah, man. Peace is awesome. Let's buy a bunch of Peacekeepers. Boom. Peacekeeper, Peacekeepers. This card's good, too. It's like a good commander card. It's, it's just very iconic. I mean, I love this card. I love the artwork. I love the horse. I love the sunset. Freaking love the actual Peacekeeper himself. Like, freaking awesome, guys. Awesome cards. Oh, love these. I love these. Got like 30 or 40 copies of those. And then, this card, guys. One of my favorite cards growing up. And this card, I think, has huge potential. Huge potential to go in to, you know, be 20, 30, 40 bucks. And right now, when I bought these, I was buying these for $1 each, guys. $1. And this Bone Dancer. Look at this card, guys. How sweet is this artwork? It's just, it's, it's a guy, freaking zombie, dancing on the bones of all of his victims, basically. Look at this card, guys. All it's gonna take is for one sweet commander zombie deck to really take shape and everyone's gonna want a bone dancer guys and guess what it's on the reserve list there's just not enough bone dancers to go around there simply aren't enough bone dancers out there for everyone so i bought 50 50 copies of bone dancer for near mint copies love this card i think my average cost on this card was a dollar and 18 cents freaking awesome guys i will buy every single bone dancer you have for a dollar and 18 cents like give me all of them this card is so sick here i'll even read it for you put the top creature card from defending players graveyard into play under your control bone dancer deals no combat damage this turn use this ability only if bone dancer is attacking and unblocked and only once each turn so you swing with your Bone Dancer anytime it gets through. Instead of dealing two damage, you just steal the top card in their graveyard, top creature card. Pretty insane, guys. There's some combos. Like just imagine when a boss, when there's a boss zombie commander, and like this guy's gonna be in every commander deck. It's a freaking sweet card with awesome artwork. Very iconic. Very old. 1997 Weatherlight on the reserve list. This is my favorite investment right now for how cheap it is. Absolutely insane. Okay guys, and then these are cards that I've just bought recently, though all the cards previous were I bought in either March or April. These two I've just bought a bunch of in June. So just two months ago, Thawing Glaciers. I love this card guys. I'm gonna show you on the chart why I bought a bunch of these. Bunch of sawing glaciers and Yogmas Bargain. Freaking awesome artwork. Freaking 1999 Vintage Magic Reserve List. And just all around. Just one of my favorite cards growing up. It's banned in some formats, but like pay one life draw card. Like, how good is this card, guys? Very iconic, very cool. So anyways, bought 50 of these, I think 40 or 50. Now I'm gonna show you exactly how I chose these cards and why. And why I decided what like really pushed me over the edge to buy a bunch of them. So here we go, let's get to the charts. All right guys, so here's the chart of Lion's Eye Diamond. And as you can see, summer of 2017 the price of this card was 
right around 120 bucks, 125 bucks. And so when I saw a play set for 400, I thought, well, it's a little bit of a discount. And the most enticing thing about the whole thing from me, guys, is when you look at the chart, this is what I was looking for. I was looking for cards, really good cards, playable cards, and also, like I said, you know, just desirable cards for collectors and players that had spiked in price significantly. And if you see here, July of 2016, the year prior, this card had spiked to 250 bucks, and then there was a long period of retracement, guys, where the card fell slowly, slowly, slowly from 250 down to 200 down to 150 down to 130 all the way down to 125 and then it just bottomed out here guys look how long this card was between 120 and 130 bucks it was months six months or so this card just bottomed out at 120 bucks which to me kind of felt like okay this card isn't going to go down in value anymore and there's a thing called price memory, guys, where lots of desirable assets, they will eventually go back to whatever price they were before. And oftentimes, they'll surpass the all-time highs of what they were before. So I saw this Lion's Eye Diamond, bottomed out 125 bucks. I could buy them for $100, and I figured they're not going to go down and when they decide to go back up, when they become desirable again, they're going to go to at least $250 because that's where they previously were. So I bought them as well as these Mox Diamonds. Now, this, the story with the Mox Diamonds was a little bit similar, but it was also just not as drastic as the price fluctuation with the Lion's Eye Diamonds, guys. 2016, the Mox Diamond here was about a hundred bucks was its high, and it had only retraced a little bit over the next year. The summer of 2017, it was still 80 bucks. So it was a 20% retracement, but the main thing about the Mox Diamonds was I really wanted them to play with. And I, so not only were they desirable for collectors and players, but they were desirable to myself. If they didn't go up in value, I was happy keeping them. I just thought it was a great card to buy. 80 bucks was just a great investment in my mind because I was happy keeping them. So, as we time goes on with these two cards, as you can see here in these charts, after a long period, months and months of either retracement or just flat, just flat money, these cards start exploding, guys. They have a huge price spike. Lion's Eye Diamond, 28, what is this? Let's see. Summer, so one year later, summer of 2018, Lion's Eye Diamond, go, my $100 investment goes up $275, guys, for one Lion's Eye Diamond. Now, here we go. Look at this chart. From $275, it retraces again, again, down, 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 down. Back down to under 200 bucks, $195 in April of 2019. If I didn't already have these Lion's Eye Diamonds, I would have considered that another good time to buy. Or if I just had a bunch of money, I probably would have bought more Lion's Eye Diamonds after this large retracement. Because then, look at this. They sit here, they, they go flat for a while, they just kind of stay steady at the, just under 200 bucks and then zoom out to today, boom. Lion's Eye Diamonds, guys, are $355. $355. Three years later, off a $100 investment. My $400 investment, guys, is worth... $1,400, a little over $1,400. So I kind of watched this whole thing play out with not only the Lion's Eye Diamond, but check out this, Mox Diamond, guys. $80 Mox Diamonds. I bought two of them. 
zoom, 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 a couple years later, look at these price spikes. Giant price spike here, also 2018, Lion's Eye, I mean, uh, Mox Diamond, absolutely explodes, guys. Over 500 bucks, and then look at this retracement. Look at this retracement right here, guys. Look, from fi over 500 bucks, it spends the next entire year retracing, 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 all the way down to 200 bucks. From 500 to 200 bucks, guys. 2019, great time. Would have been an absolutely great time to buy a bunch of Mox Diamonds. Because, of course, look where they are today. Zoom out, zoom out. Look at this price spike, guys. Not only does this price memory hit its all-time high, it surpasses it. All the way up to $700 now for a Mox Diamond. 700 bucks. And then let's go back to Lion's Eye Diamond. Look at this first price spike. Over 250 bucks. And then it retraces down 150, 120. And... People are thinking that's crazy. It'll never go back to 250. Well, look what the price memory says. Price memory says, boom, back to 250. Not only that, we're surpassing 250, up to 285. Then it retraces again, retraces again, all the way down under 200, and then boom, above 280, all the way to 355. So if price memory is a real thing on these desirable investments, especially ones that have a finite supply, guys. So I watched this play out and that led me into investing heavily this year, 2020. Let me show you. Let's go first here to Sliver Queen, guys. Boy, I love this. I love this chart of Sliver Queen. Look at how it was about 175 to 100 bucks for a really long time. Then it spikes up to $250 in the summer of 2019. This whole last year, guys, this retracement of Sliver Queen all the way down, all the way down, and then it just kind of sat here at 110 bucks. This is when I bought. I bought March of 2020. I bought these two Sliver Queens, and the next month it went down a little bit. You could have got them for 100 bucks if you bought at the perfect time, $100 at the low. But then look at now, guys. After this long retracement period, the price memory kicks in. Here we go. Boom. Sliver Queen. These cards doubled in price in a matter of months. And guess what? Is it going to go back to 250 Yes. I really think it will. It's going to hit 250 And then I think it's going to blow past 250 guys. I think Sliver Queen is a $500 card. This card is iconic. It's, it's absolutely just awesome. It goes in every Sliver deck. It's incredible. So I bought into Sliver Queens and then let's go here, check out the chart for Scorch Ruins. This is similar to Mox Diamond, guys. I love this card. This card, actually all these Weatherlight cards are cards from my childhood that I just like wanted to have, you know? Like I was happy holding these if they didn't spike. But look at these charts, guys. Look at this chart. I bought these in April. Keep in mind, April, 2020. Why did I buy these in April 2020? Because look, these cards spiked. This card was $25. $25. And it retraced over... Uh, the longer they retrace, the better for me. As long as they kind of find a bottom, they retrace, retrace, retrace. Look at this long retracement. And then they just kind of found a bottom here at 10 bucks, And it got so ridiculous where I was just like... Are you serious? $10 can buy me a Scorch Ruins? I'm going to buy as many as I can find. So I bought all the near mint copies that I could find. And it just kind of like happened to be a great time. I was confident. I was planning on holding these for a couple years. I didn't know how long it would take for the price memory to kick in. I knew it would come eventually. And then here we go, guys. We're a couple months later. And look at this card. The price memory kicks in and it's right back to its all-time high. And is it going to go higher? Yes, it probably will. I think this card, again, is probably $30, $40, $50 card. Eventually, it's probably a $100 card over time. There's just not that many of them out there. So now you'll get the picture here. Get what I'm saying. 
Let's take a look at all these cards much quicker. Go through much quicker. Look at this. This chart right here, guys, is an absolute thing of beauty, in my opinion. This is the perfect retracement. Peacekeeper was the absolute perfect example. Look at this card. It spiked to $50 in 2018. It had a very slow and just steady, steady retracement, guys. Look how beautiful this chart is. Look how beautiful this chart is. And now it just finds its perfect bottom at $6. Are you serious? $50 all the way down to $6. I was getting these for under $5. I was getting play sets, putting in offers on eBay, play sets for 18 bucks, near mint copies. It's absolute steals, guys. And then, of course, look at the chart now. A couple months later, it's 20 bucks. 20 bucks, guys. Is it gonna go back to 50? Yes, it's, it's the $50 card. It just is. The collectability, the playability, the limited supply. This is a $50 card, guys, and it's probably gonna be worth more than $50 someday. So I was all in, all in on the Peacekeeper. Lotus Veil, go to the Lotus Veil. Look at this card, guys, just look at the chart. Look at this Lotus Veil chart. Are you kidding me? Is this, does this look familiar to you? Tell me this doesn't look exactly like Peacekeeper. This is basically the exact same chart, guys. It was 40 bucks, had a nice two years of retracing, retracing, retracing. As soon as it got under $15, I was like, wow, like this card is beautiful. It's iconic. It has the word Lotus in it. I used to play with this card as a kid, 15 bucks. I would rather have this in, you know, a, a collector booster pack. You know what I'm saying? So I bought tons of these and wouldn't you know it? Look at this chart, guys. Look at this chart. Here comes the price memory, 30 bucks, 31 almost. Is it gonna go to 40? Yes. Is it gonna go beyond 40? Probably. This card's, you know, 50 or $100 in the future. I don't know how long it's going to take, but these are great investments when you see a chart like this. Because look, this is, this is what I like to call it, guys. You see this chart? It looks like, this looks like the, a Batman ear, right? So you know how Batman has those pointed ears? And then here's his head. And then, boom. It makes a Batman head, guys. This chart, I call a Batman head. You got one ear here, slow, slow forming of his, the top of his head, then boom, here comes his second ear to form the Batman head. Actually, you know what? Let's go back to the Scorch Ruin chart. That's actually even a better example because it's already completed the Batman head. Look at this Batman head. That's a Batman head. Here's his ear. Here's his head. Here's his other ear. Batman head chart. <laughs> Lastly, we're gonna go check out the Bone Dancers, guys. Actually, that's not last. Got a couple more cards. It's like, it's like just repeating myself, guys. Look at this, look at that Batman ear. Here's the left ear of Batman. Here's his nice retracement, and here's the bottom. This card was freaking under $2. From $10 to under two bucks. And when the card's this cheap, like, you can buy them for a dollar. People are selling them play sets for four bucks. I was putting in offers. I got my average price. I think it was, I said, a dollar eighteen. Bought tons of these guys. This card is so good. Is it going to be ten dollars? Absolutely. This is a ten dollar card. In the future, twenty, twenty five, fifty. Who knows? This card is is very playable, and it's just like who doesn't love this artwork? Like really, when you sit and think about it like that. This is like a fine piece of artwork you can get for, now it's three bucks, 350, who cares? This card's gonna be worth a lot more than that someday, guys. All right, Sawing Glacers. Beautiful card, guys. Alliances, look at this chart, guys. This is one I just bought in June. Let's see, June, 
June. Yep, June. 12 bucks. I got my average price down to $10 a copy for this. Look at Thawing Glaciers, guys. This is the same exact chart, guys. 40 bucks. Retrace, 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 retrace. Down to 12 bucks, and it just bottoms out. It's not going down any further. Make offers on eBay, buy them on TCG, whatever you, wherever you like to buy them. Tons of them, 10 bucks. And then two months later, slowly, it's, we're at the very beginning, guys. This is a great time to buy sawing glaciers. You can get them for 15 bucks on eBay, you can get them for less. You can get them for 12 bucks. Just put in offers, buy all the thawing glaciers. I'm like, I'm still buying them. If I see a good one pop up, I've alert set, and one pops up, put in an offer, or I just buy it immediately. This is going to be a $40 card again, in my opinion, and I just I just love it. It's a great card, very iconic, especially it's another one of those real-world cards. The glaciers are actually thawing, guys. This card is like real-world. We have thawing glaciers. It's like going to be headline news for the next every year. The glaciers are thawing. It's just a really cool card. I love this card. It's a great investment. And then, in my opinion, guys, these are all just my opinion. Don't don't take my word for it. Do your own research on these, but I love these. I just love these cards. If you wanna if you have them and want to sell them to me, I will buy them. Let's take a look at uh Yogmoss Bargain. Yogmoss Bargain, guys. This card had a severe spike to 50 bucks. 50 bucks in 2017. Now it's retraced for a really long time. Long retracement. It's been banned in some formats, but it's still just the artwork. It's awesome. It's very iconic. It's a very powerful card. This pay a life to draw a card is so good. So, anyway, once it hit under five dollars, I couldn't help but buy a bunch. I was buying these for three bucks, putting in offers. So, fifty Ogmos bargains. My average price is four dollars and twenty four cents. And then. Bought these also in June. I bought these with the Thawing Glaciers. And they're already seven bucks. And are they gonna go higher? Yes. How much higher? I don't know. But they're worth more than seven bucks, guys. You're kidding me. So anyway, those are what I've bought. And then I just wanna share, I have a, quite a few cards on my list. And I'm just gonna give you, I haven't bought them yet, but I'm gonna give you two. Let's see, how many should I do? Let's just do, let's do this one first. Brain geyser, guys. This card is just awesome. Let's look at this chart here. All right. Reserve list. Target player must draw X cards. You can draw cards. You can mill your opponent for a ton of cards. It's very playable, very powerful, and it's just iconic, guys. This is from the beginning of Magic, 1993, 1994. Re revised, like, alpha, beta, of course, those cards are really expensive. This revised copy, 11 bucks, guys. You can find them for less. You can get them for eight. It bottomed out here a couple months ago at under $7, guys. It's already on its way back to 11 bucks. Is it gonna go up back up to in the 20s? Of course, I think it is. I think it's a great buy. That's why it's on my list. And then here's another one. I'm gonna give you a free one on my list. Urtai Wizard Adept, guys. Look at this card. Almost 20 bucks here in 2018, summer 2018. Look at the chart, guys. This has kept going down, retracing, retracing. Now it's been under here, right in here, under 10 bucks at like six, seven bucks. And it's just now starting to go. It's just now starting, it's up to 11 bucks as well. Is it gonna be in the 20s again? Absolutely, it's a great wizard. It enables you to counter spells. It's very playable. It's a legend. It's reserved list. It's freaking awesome artwork. Like, it's just a good example of another card that I think is going up in value. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna give you those two for free. My next video, hopefully, maybe not my next video, but eventually I'm gonna make a dual land video, show you all the ones I bought, but I really want to do some more box openings and all sorts of new videos. And 
if you really just, if you watch this video and you liked it and you learned anything, please just hit the sub subscribe button. I really want to build my subscribers so that I can open more boxes to just share stuff with you guys, help with investing, whatever I can to help the magic community. Just please like, please subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Timmy out.